Most people have some concept of the words acceleration and velocity and what they mean. Most people don't reference position as a function in and of itself, but they know that velocity is how fast you're traveling somewhere. And they usually think of it as speed, but um, speed is sort of, it doesn't matter which direction you're going, you have a positive speed. Velocity indicates orientation, so it's a little bit different. Most people think of acceleration as how much you're speeding up or slowing down. So they know that it's the change in velocity, if you will, and that velocity was change in position. They just don't use those words. The level to which you need to understand these concepts depends on what you're trying to do and the tasks you want to be able to um, complete. If you are, for example, designing a roller coaster, if I'm going to ride the roller coaster, I want you to be an engineer. I want you to have a very, very solid understanding of all of those concepts and how they relate to each other. If you're trying to put a space shuttle or a satellite into space, you want to know where it's going to land and when it's going to get there. Now, if you think about what the English words acceleration and velocity mean, if you know a little bit of calculus, then you can figure out that velocity ought to be the derivative of the position function because it really truly means your change in position. Acceleration, if it's going to mean change in speed or in our case change in velocity because again we want direction to be defined then it ought to be the derivative of velocity. Uh, we want to indicate which direction is backward if you will so if I have a negative velocity typically we consider that I'm falling or I'm moving backward. Now I'm not going to be arrogant and say for all and forever up is going forward. But once you've defined your orientation, and typically because we use graphs in the plane, we consider that right is going forward or up is going forward, and that's typically what the positive means. Now acceleration, if you're slowing down, it doesn't mean your acceleration is negative. Um, acceleration being negative, if I'm going backward, means I'm going backward faster. So if I have the signs matching, then I'm speeding up. If the signs do not match, then I'm slowing down. If all of these functions are related the way I said they were, then if I integrate acceleration, I should be able to get velocity. Integrate velocity, I get position. But what I'm missing there is a constant, because the derivative only tells me the shape of the graph, but it doesn't tell me, say, where it crosses the y-axis. So we have to know a little bit more to get the function itself. So if I integrate acceleration, I'll get velocity, but then I need the constant if I really truly want to be able to say, this is your velocity. So on Earth, if I'm in the air, if I've been shot into the air, I'm falling through the air, but the only force acting on me is gravity, aside from potentially air resistance, which we won't consider, then I have a constant acceleration. Gravity is the only thing acting on me. It's the only thing changing my speed. And we, most of you know that to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared or minus 32 feet per second squared. But at any rate, it's constant. If I integrate a constant function, I get a line. So velocity is going to be a line if I'm here on Earth. If you'll just look at the board, velocity is going to be a, whatever it is, if you're on Mars, it's different, but it's still constant. T plus some value C. Now, I'm writing a little c, not a big c, because I really truly mean to indicate there's a number there, a value. And it depends on what you're doing in the air. So if this is given and we know initial value, V of zero, in fact, is C because I'm plugging zero in for T. So in most formulas in physics, you see this as V sub zero, but really, truly, it's the velocity when you first leave wherever you're starting. So this gives me, if I integrate a line, of course, I get a quadratic. So this gives me that the position function is going to look like A over 2 T squared plus initial velocity times time plus some other little c. Well, in this case, if I plug in 0, I'll get the initial position. So when you've seen this formula, 
s of t equals a over 2 t squared plus v naught t plus s naught. In physics, it came from this calculus. So you can't just say, oh, this is the function for once and for all that tells me my position if I'm on the Earth, because if I didn't know initial velocity, then I would have had to plug in, say, 3 for t. Or maybe if I didn't know some other initial value, I only knew what happened 20 seconds after I left, then you have to plug it in and you have to solve for the little c. It's not given for free. Now, we're going to look at some videos. And in the first video, I want to say, how did he know he could catch the football? This actually only requires some calculus. The initial velocity, the initial angle can be measured and they'll be more or less consistent all the time. Um, velocity and acceleration for a projectile only depends on the angle and the initial velocity. That's all you need to know. And so if you know just some calculus, you can figure out based on how fast he can run where he could intercept the football for a given angle and then you can just adjust the angle to match him. Um, if you look at this next video which is a catapult, um, this is of course modern day somebody just doing this but in the old days in medieval times it was a matter of do I win or lose the war and this because it doesn't have a set velocity depending on what you put in it the initial velocity will be different and that took some knowledge of physics, so in that case you need to know some calculus and you need to know some physics also. In the video with um, the motorcycle rider, which is Evil Knievel's son, um, he has to know if he was just starting at the base of the ramp, then initial velocity would tell him everything he needed to know, and in this case he'd only need physics or calculus. Now he wants to land at exactly the right spot on the ramp, because if he's short, he's going to fall into the other cars. And if he's too long, he's going to go too far down and hit the ground, and he's not going to have that ramp to smooth his landing. So he wants to know most definitely because it's life or death. And he has to know what happens to his velocity as he goes down the first ramp and across the ground. That person who's telling him how he needs to speed up and what he needs to do had better know a good bit of engineering because he's risking his life. So in these tasks you see that different levels of understanding are good enough for the task at hand and it doesn't always take an engineer but sometimes it does.